All right, universal health care again. Um, this is a follow-up on a previous post I made. I've gotten a lot of responses, and I've gotten some invites to include my video in other forms. Um, and this time, instead of saying why it's a bad idea, I'm going to tell you what's going to get lost in your health care if you choose universal health care. Now, a lot of people like to talk about insurance companies, and they complain about them, saying they're screwing us over. Now, one of the deep, dirty, dark secrets here is the same elements that cause an insurance company to limit what operations you have access to, what um, uh, medications you have access to, what uh, doctors you have access to, are the same limitations that the government will put in place when they take over the operation. So if you think you're being screwed over by your insurance company, your medical insurance company, just wait until the federal government gets a hold of it. Okay, you're still going to get screwed over. Now the difference between the two is that in the insurance world, you can fire your insurance company. You can choose a different insurance company on a personal level. If you personally feel offended by your insurance company because it won't cover what you want them to cover, you can go looking for another insurance company that will. All right? You've done it if you had a favorite doctor and that doctor doesn't take that insurance. You can go find the insurance company that covers your doctor and you can join their insurance. You can't fire the federal government. Once they control it, you're trapped. Your only recourse will be to file complaints, which of course will have to go through tons of red tape, through bureaucracy, and they may or may not listen to you. And then you can try to cause a movement of people to try to force your particular choice to take place, but that could take years, and it may or may not be effective. So in the long run, you're going to lose freedoms. Now, I've had people say, well, that isn't communism. Communism to me is a case where the government assumes responsibility for your personal issues. For example, your income. They assume responsibility determining how much you should earn. Um, uh, your housing. They assume responsibility for where you can live, how you can live, etc. Um, uh, your freedoms to perform daily functions in the way that you want to perform them. In this case, giving up your medical care. Socialism is really just slightly watered down communism. The only difference is the electoral system still is in place. They haven't weeded out that yet. But for the most part, it's giving up personal freedoms to the government authority. Now, I've heard a lot of people say, what well, about those who are not insured? I'm going to give you a dark, 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 dirty little secret about that. The fact of the matter is, is that for many people, it's of value not to be insured. For example, let's say, you're a healthy young man, and clearly at least 100 million Americans are healthy young adults. And your average medical bill without insurance, you bought straight out of pocket, just paid out of cash to the doctor, was about $139 for a doctor visit and maybe $50 for medications. Because you really don't have major medical bills to worry about. Does it make sense for you, whose total medical debt for a year might be $200, because you're healthy? Does it make sense for you to get insurance? Because if, you, if it doesn't, I mean, a lot of these young adults don't really need insurance. If you, pay, if you get insurance, you're going to be paying easily $1,200 a year, possibly more, depending on what kind of insurance you get and how you get it. So long and short of it is, for you, it's more advantageous just to pay out of pocket. You're going to save easily $1,000 a year by just paying out of pocket. And a lot of times when they talk about all these uninsured people, a lot of times they're talking about young, healthy adults. Now let's talk about the numbers of how much the average American spends on health care. The key word there is average. Now, if you look at the general population, you'll find that a large portion of the population is older, nearing retirement. The baby boomers, you've heard about them. 
they're going to need major medical bills. They're going to need major medical things to take care of. That's where the prices get skyrocketed. That's where the average gets drug up to those high numbers because you have a large elderly population. Now, the secret also is that, in a lot of ways, this universal health care is being pushed by the baby boomers because they don't want to pay these large medical bills. They want the young generation to pay these medical bills. And they've done a little clever ploy. The ploy is, oh, look at all these uninsured people who don't get this. Well, the fact of the matter is, what they don't really care about these uninsured people. The uninsured people are the ones that they're going to dig into the pocket of and take more than 50%, 50 plus of their paycheck away from them. They're worried about their medical bills. It's about them. It's not about the young, and it's not about the put children, it's about the elderly and the elderly retired. They don't want to pay their medical bills. They would love to have the federal government cover all of it. And um, uh, that's the dark, dairy secret about who's really behind this movement. It's not the young who need it. Now, can the system work? Can a society survive with universal health care? Absolutely. Humans are very flexible creatures. They can survive in pretty much any environment you throw them into. It may not be as pleasant. It might be more frustrating. But people will try to find their way around whatever system you set up to get what they want. That's the nature of human beings. Now, so far I have yet to see anyone successfully, in my opinion, argue that universal health care is going to save the day for the American population. I don't see it as a vast, dire need that they keep expounding it to be. And I believe if you start crunching the numbers, you'll find that it's AARP that's really behind this big movement in the United States. It's not the poor, unfortunate souls. And also, and you can expect also another thing to happen when universal health care comes in place. Home ownership will drop like a rock. Because people won't have enough money to pay their mortgage. They'll be forced to rent. And the next thing you'll hear from the federal government will be universal housing. It's a right. Just letting you know, and it's a prediction. Thank you very much and have a good day.